Hi, I'm Avery. I'm Lily. Come on, Lily, you're gonna have to dig a little deeper than that. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to From the Closet. Uh, <laughs> today we are covering The Frog and the Frog. There was no princess in this movie. Yeah, no. It, no, totally not. So, um, I'm obviously I'm gonna leave a link down below for you to purchase this movie yourself. Uh, obviously this podcast Wait, will contain um, spoilers for The Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog. Um, Avery, what, uh, website do you use to, um, purchase the, what, the movie? I usually use Voodoo. Voodoo? Voodoo? Yeah, that was. But. I got Voodoo, I got Voodoo, I got things I even tried. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this movie's okay, generally. Like, it, it's just, like, kind of okay. Um, I think the songs kind of hard carry it. Oh my god, the first song was amazing. All the songs were amazing. <laughs> Yes, but I, I just have the best memories of uh, Friends on the Other Side. But that wasn't the first song. Was it? I could swear. Because Almost There was before that. Oh, right. If that's even the name of it. I don't know the names of the songs. Yeah, no. Friends on the Other Side was my favorite song throughout the movie. And I love the rendition of, like, the lyric. No, it wasn't even lyrical. Um... The voodoos were singing it um, as you pulled in the um, the shadow man. <laughs> yeah, and is is that all he was known by was the shadow man throughout the entire movie? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Or Orlando's must be a very interesting place. <laughs> you mean or New Orleans? <laughs> oh, Nor New Orleans. Or as they oh, say, damn. as they say in New Orleans, New Orleans. New Orleans. Um, yeah, God, I know it Orlando. Wrong. Orlando's in Florida. <laughs> it's yeah, Florida. Yeah. Oh, where is New Orleans? Louisiana. Uh, oh, sorry, Louisiana. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little Louisiana parlor trick. Don't don't mind. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so I wasn't really that invested in the plot of this movie. Like, the romance just kind of seemed meh to me. It was like, you know, your typical... I feel oh. like, um... T to me, it was like... Like, the prince was kind of rushed. Like, in the beginning there. Yeah, it, it was like, like... Like, they just really wanted him to become a frog as soon as possible. Yeah, it's like, to me, it felt like, oh, yeah, she doesn't know how to have fun. He doesn't know how to, you know, be serious. So they're perfect for each other. That's really the extent of it. Yeah, it wasn't really plot heavy, but despite that, it was actually pretty fun. Like, like you said, you know, the songs carried it. The, um, yeah, I think the songs know, there was, hard there was some carry good, it. <laughs> there was some good humor in there. I, I think the movie wanted me to be sad when Ray was injured. And I literally just did not care. What? You didn't care? No. <laughs> I mean, Evan died. <laughs> even, they didn't even show his corpse. Like, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, first he was injured, then he died, and, like, he became, like, a star or whatever. I didn't care. <laughs> How dare you? That's how little I was invested in this plot, Lily. <laughs> Fuck. No. No growling. Yeah, we're recording here, Chuck. <laughs> but... I wonder if the mail's here. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, what was the fucking alligator's name? Shit. <laughs> I think it was Luis... Oh yeah, Louise. Yeah, make that. Yeah, that one was kind. That he, he was kind of a weird one. Um, I liked how I liked the twist at the end where it was like, oh, uh, you know, you're actually able to turn back into human because once you're married, she is a princess, and that counts. I mean, that kind of made sense. <laughs> 
Um, Charlotte's dresses are ridiculous. And I kind of want them. <laughs> I know his... I like how his dad, uh, her dad, just really tried, you know, to have that backbone. And just really failed. Really failed. But yeah. that guy was spineless. <laughs> and then, like, it was really cool to see, like, Charlotte not be a total bitch um, at the end. Oh, yeah. He really wasn't. It uh, was a little bit creepy. Oh, yeah, there was that. There was that creepy thing where she was like, oh, who knew he'd have a younger brother? And he was like, I'm six. Well, I've waited this long. Or something like that. I mean, at least she's waiting, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, <laughs> groomer. Um, I mean, at, at the very least, she's not trying to get him while he's young. <laughs> there. I mean... There's to be fair, she, time to to, be fair uh, she is only trying to marry for money, and that's it. Yeah. And also, um, maybe she'll have time to come to her senses. Hopefully. But yeah, it, 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 that was kind of a weird line at the end of the movie. I was like, uh. Oh yeah, that's definitely a weird line. I was I'm, like, I'm just like. Really? I was like, well, Ugh. I mean, it could be worse. But yeah, kind of gross. It is all for kinda money, gross. though, and not for anything really super disgusting. Yeah. He just wants the money. He just wants the money. Yeah. I just imagine she goes up to the kid and, like, put the money in the bag. <laughs> I can't imagine Charlotte in- doing that. But yeah, um, I like I really like Tiana's dedication, but like at the same time, she keeps blowing off her friends, and that's not cool either. You gotta live a little. Um, and honestly, the plot of this movie is really just kind of, like it kind of boils down to um, basically Prince and this one guy who is supposed to be like a servant or something, I guess. Come across the yeah, shadow like the chancellor or whatever. Yeah, they come across the shadow man. They get bamboozled, and the prince is turned into a frog. And this guy, whose name I don't remember, basically just starts impersonating the prince. Um, for the money, and the shadow man also wanted to send money. You know, actually, why in the world did he need the actual person gone? I guess I could think of a few reasons. I mean, the Chancellor would probably be more susceptible to, you know, you know, I was going to say bribes, but, um, um, not greed. Well, greed, but also, um, he had more of a dark heart. Like, yeah, and, how, how can I say, like, he was jealous, basically. Um, He was... Yeah, jealous is a good word. Use your words, Lily. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right ones. <laughs> but you know what I mean. He was definitely the type of person to um, get manipulated. Yeah, and he was also, like, angry at the prince for mistreating him and shit. Which is fair. Um... So, throughout the movie, he didn't really do that. He was just trying to hang loose, and the Chancellor was just like, Saya, you must, must come with me. We are, duh. You are royalty or whatever, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, so basically, uh, Prince gets turned into a frog. He shows up on, like, uh, so, meanwhile, uh, Meanwhile, Tiana is, like, trying to get this restaurant and, like, get this one building so that she can use it to open up her restaurant. 
and someone's outbid her after she saved up so much money. Um, and then, like, they get kind of get into a fight, and her dress gets, like, ruined and stuff, so she goes upstairs, changes, and is just, like, standing out on the balcony, and the frog prince just kind of shows up on the, uh, ledge of that balcony, <laughs> and, uh... I don't know how he got there, but, I mean, I don't think he knows how he got there either. <laughs> and, uh, she jokingly is like, oh, I suppose you want to kiss. <laughs> and... He goes... The frog's like, yeah, that's preferable. Yeah, he was like, kissing would be nice, yes. Oh, yeah, and a word of warning. If you see a frog and you are not a princess, do not kiss him. If that frog is cursed, you will also become cursed. I would say if you see a frog, do not kiss it. Period. Even if you are a princess. I don't know what my frog happened to you. If the frog starts talking to you, then you might need to do this one simple thing. Run. Lay off the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Yeah, if, if frogs start talking to you, I mean, you've been smoking some hard shit. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Um, but anyway, ah, <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay, so uh, there's a bunch of shenanigans in Sue, and she, and eventually, he he thinks she is a princess because this is a costume party and everything, um, and she's wearing like a crown or whatever, and she's not aware that it has to be a princess, and she kisses the frog. And she turns into a frog. Boom. And they get... Now we have two frogs. Yeah. And they're mad at each other and everything. And, um... It's a whole yes. mess. <laughs> God, now there's two frogs. Yeah, and then somehow they get... And the get... chemicals in the water are turning them gay. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, so they make their way down to uh, the main area of the party, and they get chased away, like, out of the party, and it's kind of nuts. They they go into the party, and they go out of the party. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what happened. And uh, See, Apparently, progs are not welcome in parties. Yeah, apparently not. And then, of course, there's the cliche joke of, oh, there's a frog in your dress now. Huh. Because, like, one of them, I think maybe even both of them jumped down Charlotte's dress. Yeah, I believe so. And eventually they end up, like, in the woods and stuff. Uh, and they're fighting. And, and they're being chased by uh, crocodiles. Yeah. Or are they alligators? Who cares? <laughs> Nobody actually knows the difference. But anyway, and it's not like the difference matters. They're basically the same animal. Fight me. Um, anyway, uh, they eventually uh, escape the crocodiles, alligators. I'm going to say alligators because they said gators in the movie. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, it makes sense. Um, so anyway, they come across, uh, they, they, they come across these alligators, they manage to escape the alligators, and then, uh, the prince starts playing, like, music on this weird little thing he's got, and an alligator sneaks up from behind and was like, I love that song! <laughs> and he has a trumpet. Yeah. For reasons. I was able to play the trumpet. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if alligators have lips. That reminds me. There was a scene in this movie where um, somebody said, like, your head is in a tuba. That wasn't a tuba. Mm, I forgot what it was. It looked like a French horn to me. Yeah. Well... 
one second. I need to. It's kind of hard. Obviously, seeing all these instruments in real life, but yeah, I cannot same. remember for the life of me. Same. It was definitely not a tuba, tuba at the very least. I mean, I've seen a French horn before, and if it's the instrument I'm thinking about, that would not actually be a French horn. Of course. Obviously, there's an image in my mind, and I do not know if it has a name. <laughs> But, like, whatever. At the very least, it wasn't a tuba. But anyway, um... So, they also come across Ray, this, um... Firefly. And, um... Basically, they have to journey through the woods, uh, to find this old lady who is supposed to, like, turn them back to human. Mm -hmm. And, um... Essentially, uh, this firefly is in love with a star, and he thinks it's a firefly. Cool. Um, and there's also this running theme about wishing upon a star, because it's Disney. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like one of the first Disney uh, movies that... Yeah, this is a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, like, like, a lot of the Disney movies we've covered in the past, it's like, oh... Okay, Disney made this. Cool. But this movie is like, this is definitely a Disney movie. Nobody else would make this. You know, it's kind of got that feeling. Because, hmm. like, what are the Disney movies we've covered in the past? Raya and the Last Dragon and 101 Dalmatians? I think that's it. Um, Lady and the Tramp. Oh, Lady and the Tramp. Okay. Um, Which, would, yes, would have come out by now. Yeah, I know, because it's a wheel movie and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this movie actually felt like a Disney movie. And it's just kind of okay. It's okay. Um, in general, like, I don't really love it very much. Uh, but yeah, the songs are bangers, probably playlist worthy. Mm -hmm, definitely. We'll see if I actually end up putting them on my playlist. <laughs> Maybe playlist worthy for someone else. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, eventually, they make their way to um, this old lady kind of falling in love along... Like, kind of the prince and Tiana falling in love along the way. Um, and... Uh, Basically, she's like, no, I'm not going to turn you back into a human. you got to go kiss a princess. And technically, since Charlotte's father is the Mardi Gras king, she is the princess until Mardi Gras ends. So, like, they would have until midnight, um, basically, mm -hmm. to have Charlotte... Theoretically, she would only have to kiss one of them, but, and it could be either one of them, but the movie just kind of went with, uh, the prince because Disney, um, <laughs> when was this movie, uh, release? I forgot. 2009. So it was the last movie before the second Disney Renaissance, which started hmm. with Tangled. I believe it's their 49th. Uh, it's Disney Animation Studios' 49th movie. I believe. Tangled being their 50th. But, yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be amazing if the wheel landed on Tangled later? Yeah. I would love to cover Tangled. Also, by the way, um... Hmm. There is going to be a Disney Plus series focused on Tiana, and we are going to cover it, if we're still doing the podcast when it comes out, because it doesn't Once come it comes out. It comes out in 2023. Hmm. So, yeah, that's a whole thing. Anyway, um... Whew. Uh, okay, so they get to this uh, blind witch woman person, um, and, 
And she's like, yeah, uh, you gotta get a kiss from a princess. And they go and they try to do it, but they kind of run out of time. A lot of shenanigans ensue. The guy who's impersonating the prince gets kind of found out. The The villain of the movie, the shadow man, just kind of gets eaten by his friends from the other side. Um, <laughs> that was pretty brutal, not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, and Ray dies. <laughs> I didn't care. It's actually, it's actually kind of brutal, the way he died. I mean... <laughs> I mean, so uh, the shadow man, like no remorse, just like stop. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, just stepped on him. <laughs> it was like, okay, Disney. Um, I don't know. I feel like there have been more impactful deaths in other Disney movies that just hit me harder. I, mean, I do have to admit, I mean, I do really like um, the shadow man's death as a Disney character, <laughs> like Disney villain. I was more referring to Ray, but okay. Like I know. I mean, I just want to say that. Yeah. It, it's... I don't know. He feels like one of the least interesting Disney villains to me. Because, like, we don't really know... Like, we don't understand his motivations or anything. It's just like, oh... Well, we do... We especially know his motivations. Well, let's just say the spirits on the other side... Um, he owes a lot of money to them. And, um... And that's why he's tricking all these people to yeah. get Yeah, but money why, to, does, why does he owe money to them? And that's not something... That's something I would like to know. Yeah. Um, and that's not something we get an explanation for. And We just know that it's happening, and um, the spirit... And he probably failed quite a bit before, because obviously this was his last chance. Yeah. Anyway, he dies, and then um, because, you know, they ran out of time, they're like, oh, well, I guess we're staying as frogs. And then they eventually get married, and then they kiss, and boom, they're turned back into humans, because now that they're married, Tiana is a princess. And that counted for the spell in order to, like, be broken or whatever. That's just kind of how that works. So in general, like, what were the things that you liked about this movie? Because I didn't really enjoy it that much. Things that I liked about it? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. I did have, like, the, um, like, the character dynamics between the um, princess and the prince. And I guess this is where, you know... Like, you know, most movies start coming on. Um, you have these two characters that are kind of polar opposites of each other, and they learn to be more like each other to make, you know, an equal balance. Yeah, that that just this- feels like a story that, like, I have seen thousands of times before. So I really want to know, it almost seems like this movie... Started it, or maybe I'm just mistaken. No, then... you're definitely mistaken because, like, this movie came out in 2009. There are definitely older stories that had a similar romance uh, plot line mm. where the characters are total opposites and they fall for each other. Yes, but I mean, not just for like romance movies like that, but also, um, you know. Neither side was necessarily wrong, and they both, you know, they both had stuff to learn. Like, that's what I'm trying to... And there's probably, like, thousands of movies like that as well. And books. So, I mean, I think <laughs> I think of Tangled, you know, like, Tangled would also fall in, under that category. I do not really think so. Tangled is quite different um it, different it, how it we'll cover more about it when we get to tangled but like it's not like um the characters weren't really total opposites of each other they just were different people and Flynn kind of does learn a lot throughout the course of the movie but um 
Rapunzel not really that much. Like what she learned. Well, she learned quite a lot. No, um, what she learned, learned how to be free and not, um, yeah, you know, restricted to um, one person. Yeah, but those weren't like morality or character like lessons that she needed to learn. Essentially, what she learns is how she's been manipulated her entire life. But I mean, that's getting into more of Tangled and less of this movie. I, I don't feel like the two romances are comparable. Also, um, do we know how long of a time frame this movie takes place over? I'm not actually sure, but it could have been more than a week. Yeah, it, it seems doubtful that it was more than a week. Um, hmm. What? Else? Okay, go ahead and talk more about what else you liked about this movie. No, for the past, like, how long have I been doing this podcast? Like, 10 minutes. I've been searching up, like, where the tuba comes in if it was actually a tuba. And it is. It's a fucking tuba. It is not. It has a giant fucking hole in the middle. But anyway. Yeah, that's an old, that's a fa old fashioned tuba. Obviously, instruments always change, um, how you play, and I have an instrument as I am looking at an instrument right now that looks exactly like the instrument that's, um, well, yeah, that's being played right there. And what you know is one of the um, origins of the tuba. And I say origins because it changed its shape a lot. But anyway, um, what else did you like uh, about the movie? I really like the Shadow Man. Um, like, we don't know m a lot about him. And while that's a bit sad, I like that because it remained like he was a mystery. You didn't know why he was in debt. In fact, you only knew um, as much as, you know, he was willing to give out. Mm hmm. I just feel like. We've had a lot of other Disney villains that I found more compelling. Uh, Gothel, for one. We've had... Uh, we had Gothel, had of, Scar, um, Jafar. Um, we had plenty of Disney villains that were less compelling. Certainly. Han. <laughs> I, forget, uh, I forget the one from Frozen. Frozen Han? Or? Yeah. Uh, the one from Big okay, Hero yeah. 6. Uh Yeah, that was more like a Scooby Doo villain. Yeah, and uh, Which, I mean, there's certainly a he, lot of he villains. Had a good backstory. D Disney uh, has a mixed big... bag of villains, I think. Yeah, um, though they've um, in co um, Disney has started uh, not Disney Pixar started to go with less of the way of the villains. Sometimes they're antagonists, but they're not really villains, you know, with the twirly mustaches anymore. You know, they're more realistic. Yeah, and like, well, how many like, we just covered Turning Red, um, mm -hmm. and like, yeah. obviously the villain of that movie is really just like, it, it's kind of hard to say because there's really two villains. There's the mother and the grandmother, and but I can't really call them villains. I can call them antagonists all day, but I can't really call them villains. Well, villain more so like in the context of a story just means like the yeah, character well, who is doing the evil thing. And like Inside Out is I an, would in, say like Inside uh, Out is an interesting one when we eventually get to it. Oh yeah, that's oh that's so interesting. Because like in Inside Out, Joy is the villain. Um, but you're also following Joy the entire movie. Yeah, exactly. Joy is the villain and the protagonist. Um. Oh God, remember the live action Maleficent movie? I didn't watch it. <laughs> 
Michael, you never watched that? Nope. Well, I mean, just from the premise, you already know that, um, you know, the main villain in... Yeah, the, the main Sleeping villain... Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, the main villain of Sleeping Beauty. Maybe we should cover... Becoming, maybe we should cover both of those movies, Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent. We should definitely cover Maleficent. I still have not watched the sequel, and I heard it's not as good as the first one, but whatever. There's a sequel? I, <laughs> yeah. You went that far behind. <laughs> Oof. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, do you have anything else you would like to say about this movie? Mm, hard to say. Um... And uh, yeah, this movie... Actually, do you know what time the movie is taking place in? Not... Like, year. Not really. It seems kind of difficult to say. It's definitely hmm. before, like, technology really took off. So it's, like... Yeah. Definitely before the last 60 years, probably. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely in the 19s. 90s. Or not the nineteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, definitely in the nineteen hundreds, maybe even earlier. Um, because Yeah. But like there was some casual racism a uh, little bit earlier in the movie. Um Enough to, you know, have a plot around it and not enough to um basically have people in race that your movie is racist yeah it was like you know it's enough to say oh yeah this character is just being racist uh but it's not enough to like put people off of the movie entirely um which oh god um one of our first movies um did that really well and i'm not saying Casually, no, it definitely put people off away from the movie with its um, homophobic um, tendency. What movie was that? Um, well, it was the um, it was the free movie in October or September. Oh, uh, but I'm a cheerleader. Okay. Yes. I. Yeah. That was definitely uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> yeah. That 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 one like it even puts me off sometimes. A, even though it's a good movie and it's like Yeah, no, it's a good movie. They just accomplished that goal way too well. Yeah. Like the goal was they had the, no subtlety. Yeah, the goal was to make you uncomfortable and it does that too well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a anyway, yeah, like, and you can find our, but I'm a cheerleader episode, um, on whatever platform you're listening to this on. We should be on Amazon now too, right? <laughs> we are on Amazon music and audible.com. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And everything. So, um, I think I want to talk about, um, the current review scores that this movie has. Um, Oh, um, yeah, sure. Okay, like I, I've got it pulled up and everything, so it has a seven. You're prepared. So it has a seven point one out of ten on IMDb. It has okay. I can see it. It has an eighty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes, a seventy three percent on Metacritic, and eighty eighty nine percent of Google users liked the movie. I'll be honest. Like when it comes to Google users, more it's gonna be more positive than not yeah because people don't really often go to like go and look up a movie or something or whatever on google and then google click the dislike it. yeah and, and then click the dislike button that that's pretty rare um so lily what would you personally rate this movie honestly i feel like um i'd be in the middle of like that seven review of IMDb and whatever whoever the hell gave that eight, like the high was it like a high eight? I think was it? it was eighty five. Yeah, uh, eight point five basically. Um, I'm gonna go with an eight point two. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, the songs 
you know, basically held it high for as long as it did. The story, unlike you, I actually did, like, it did wrap my head around for a bit. Like, I wasn't that involved, but I was definitely more involved than you. And, um, and the characters were really, um, the characters, the songs, the music, I love my jazz, um, really held it high for, um, you know, not like one of the best Disney movies, but it's definitely better than, um, some other ones they made. Yeah, I mean, it's an okay Disney movie. It's not complete garbage. So given that, I'm giving it a 6.8. Hmm. Makes sense. And um, with that, I think uh, we are going to spin the wheel to determine what our next movie is spin going to be. that wheel! Wow, Lily. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so okay, li- we did like 20 <laughs> episodes, and I never did that since then, okay? <laughs> okay. So, uh, you're probably going to be pleased with the movie that it's landed on. Hmm. How to Train Your Dragon 2. Aw, yeah. Finally, we're getting back to this franchise. What was it? Like, our November movie of the month? (laughs) I think it was our our October, but I'm not sure. (laughs) Yeah, it was like October or November. Whichever one it was. God. Like, it... Okay, it was our second episode, so it was October. Um, yeah, that's going to be uh, interesting. Wait, what is this movie coming out anyway? So, if we release... It's kind of hard to say. Lady and the Tramp movie, uh, TV show, 21st movie... Oh my god. Yeah, Lady and the Tramp, 28th TV show, the 4th movie uh free movie no the fourth would be wally because it's too soon yeah that's what i said that'd be movie and then the 11th would be free movie yeah and then the 18th the 18th is when um you're watching this move uh this this podcast is coming out hopefully (laughs) (laughs) unless we both die or like it, you never know. It could release on the 19th. That's happened before. Where we release on a Tuesday. We did and that with Turning you know, Red. It's possibility that you're listening to this in 2023. I, mm. I, I don't know. Like, you could be from the future. Hi, future people. Actually, you are from the future because we're recording this in March. Hi, future people. <laughs> I mean, I think about that a lot. Like, we talk about how, you know when we're recording this, but, like, once it's uploaded, literally until we decide to take it down, anyone can, you know, watch this, so... Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're recording this in March, and they're like, which March? (laughs) March 2022. It should be pretty obvious. Like, if they've been listening in order anyway. Nah, this person's been, like, listening to it, like... You know, they just... You know, scroll down our episode list like, oh, I like this movie. Oh, I like this movie. I want to know a bit about this movie. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, uh, gonna replace How to Train Your Dragon 2 on the wheel with, uh, uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3. The the Hidden World. Yeah. Um. I own that on DVD. I think... Uh, I might have to get it from uh, the library or something because... Oh, no. Um, remember, we already had a way for you to watch that. Did we? Because I remember two being on Netflix, but not the third one. No, remember, because I own it. Yeah, but how would I watch it? Not on live recording. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... At the very least, I do know that my library has it, so I could check it out. Um, True, but I mean, I I own it. Um, I have it on like one of those. Um, you know, you get the DVD and you put in the code, and then you own the movie on digitally. Oh, okay, that yeah. Um, but anyway, um, until next time, where we were 
we are probably covering How to Train Your Dragon 2, uh, which is actually kind of a long way off, uh, because we've got some other stuff we want to record before then. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would I would love to watch How to Train Your Dragon 2 as, you know, as soon as possible. <laughs> I don't know. Would you rather watch How to Train Your Dragon 2 or have or me... Or Infinity Train. Yeah, or have or... me finish Infinity Train. Oh, sh- <laughs> These are two good options, you know. <laughs> but there's also something I alluded to in the first How to Train Your Dragon movie, and I really want to call back to that. <laughs> All right. But yeah, um, until next time, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we'll be seeing you.